This continues the discussion about recursion. This lecture will explain the integer partition in details. More specifically, this lecture explains how to write a program that prints all possible ways to partition a positive integer. As a review, the integer partition problem takes a positive integer and breaks it into the sum of one or several positive integers. The original number itself is also allowed. For example, 2 can be broken into 1 plus 1 or 2 itself. Number 3 can be divided into 1 plus 1 plus 1, or 1 plus 2, or 2 plus 1, or 3 itself. 4 can be divided into 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, or 1 plus 1 plus 2, or 1 plus 2 plus 1, or 1 plus 3, or 2 plus 1 plus 1, or 2 plus 2, or 3 plus 1, or 4 itself. The problem we want to solve is to write a program that prints these partitions. Let's look at the output more closely. Consider the scenario when we want to partition number 4. Let's focus on the first number used for the partitions. The first number can be 1, or 2, or 3, or 4. This suggests using a for loop with numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4. Next, let's inspect everything after the first number. When the first number is 1, 3 is left and we need to partition 3. When the first number is 2, 2 is left and we need to partition 2. Thus, the method we are going to use is these steps. Suppose we want to partition number n. Step number 1, if the number to partition is 0, stop. Step number 2, select a number from 1, 2, 3, all the way to the number we want to partition. Step number 3, partition the remaining number, n minus 1, n minus 2, down to 0. You can find the partition program at this GitHub site. This program has three functions. The first function is the print partition function. It takes an array and an integer as the length of the array. This function prints the plus sign between the numbers in the array. The second function is the main function. It takes one integer from a RGV1. This is the number to be partitioned. The main function allocates heap memory as large as the number, calls the partition function with three arguments, the array to store the use numbers, 0, and the number to be partitioned. Then, the main function frees the memory and returns exit success. Next, we are going to study the partition function carefully. We will see how the stack memory changes as this recursive function progresses. For simplicity, I will not mark the return location. This function has no return value. Thus, there's no value address. The partition function is actually quite short. At the top, it checks the stop condition. If the number to be partitioned is zero, the function prints the array and returns. Otherwise, the function uses a loop to go through 1, 2, 3, to the value to be partitioned. Inside this loop, there are only two lines. The first line assigned the value of the loop. The second line calls the function again with the array as the first argument. The second argument is the index plus 1. The third argument is the number to be partitioned minus the loop value. Please take a moment to inspect this function. The return statement inside the stop condition is unnecessary. The reason is that when the third argument is zero, this function will not enter the for loop. This loop value starts at one and can be as large as the value of the third argument. If the third argument is zero, the function will not enter the for loop and as a result this function call ends. Even though the return statement is unnecessary, it is added there for clarity. 
Please remember that the main function calls this partition function with the heap memory, 0, and the number to be partitioned is the three arguments. Let's understand how this function works by tracing the changes in the stack and heap memory. When the partitioned is called the first time, all values in the heap memory are uninitialized and thus marked U. The first argument is the address of the heap memory. The second argument is 0. The third argument is the value to be partitioned and it is 4. The local variable VAL is not initialized yet and also marked U. Since the third argument is not 0, the stop condition is false. The program moves to the for loop and initialized via L to 1. The next line assigns 1 to the first element of the array. The argument RR stores the address of the heap memory and it is 10,000. The index is 0 and this means the first element of the array. Via L starts at 1. Thus, 1 is assigned to the value of the first array element. The next line is a function call. The first argument is unchanged and it is the address in the heap memory, 10,000. The second argument is IND plus 1 and it is 1. The third argument is left minus via L. Left is 4 and vol is 1. Thus, the third argument is 3. The program enters the function to check the stop condition. The value of left is 3 and the stop condition is not met. The function moves to the for loop and initializes vol to 1. The next line assigns 1 to the second element of the array. The next line is another function call. The first argument is still the address of the heap memory. The second argument is IND plus 1 and it is 2. The third value is left minus vol and it is 2. The function first checks whether the stop condition is met. Since the third argument is 2, not 0, the stop condition is not met. The function continues to the for loop and initializes vol to 1. The line assigns 1 to the third element of the array. The reason this is the third element is because IND is 2. Remember, array index always starts at 0. The next line is a function call. The first argument is the address of the heap memory. The second argument becomes 3. The third argument is left minus vol and it is 1. The function checks the stop condition. The third argument is 1, not 0. Thus, the stop condition is not met. The function moves to the for loop and initializes vol to 1. Inside the for loop, the fourth element of the array, of index 3, is assigned to 1. The next line is a function call and a new frame is pushed to the top of the stack memory. At this moment, the third argument is 0 and the stop condition is met. The function prints the values in the array. This output is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. The next line is returned. This function call is ended. The top frame is popped and val increases from 1 to 2. The condition of the for loop is that vol must smaller than or equal to left. Left is 1 and vol is 2. Thus, the function exits the for loop. There is nothing else to do after the for loop. This function call is ready to end. The top frame is popped. Val increases to 2. In this frame, Left is 2. Thus, the program enters the for loop and assigns 2 to the third array element, with index equals to 2. The next line is a function call. The second argument is 3, and the third argument is left minus val equal to 0. A new frame is pushed to the top of the stack memory. Now, the stop condition is met. The program prints the first three elements in the array as 1 plus 1 plus 2. Please notice that the program prints only three numbers, not four.
The next statement is return. That means the function call ends. The top frame is popped. Val increases to 3. Since vol is greater than left now, the function exits the for loop. The top frame is popped. Val increases to 2. Left is 3. Thus, the program continues in the for loop. The program assigns 2 to the secondary element within index equal to 1. The next line is a function call. The first argument is the address of the array. The second argument is ind plus 1 equal to 2. The third argument is left minus val equal to 1. The stop condition is not satisfied. The program enters the for loop and assigns 1 to val. This line assigns 1 to the array element with index equal to 2. The next line is a function call. The third argument is left minus val equals to 0. The stop condition is met. Thus, the program prints the first three elements 1 plus 2 plus 1. The next line is returned. This function call ends. The top frame is popped. Val increases to 2. Since vol is greater than left, the program exists the for loop. After the for loop, the function has nothing else to do. This function call ends. The top frame is popped. Val increases to 3. Left is also 3. Thus, the program enters the for loop. The next line assigns 3 to the array element with index equals to 1. The next line is a function call. A frame is pushed. The stop condition is met. The program prints the first two elements of the array as 1 plus 3. The next line is returned. The function call ends. The top frame is popped. Val increases to 4. Since it is greater than 3, the program does not enter the for loop. The function call ends. The top frame is popped. Val increases to 2. Left is 4 and is greater than val. Thus, the program enters the for loop. The first line inside the for loop assigns 2 to the first element of the array. This lecture explains step by step how a recursive function works. We closely examine the changes in the stack and the heap memory. It is important for you to become very familiar with the changes in stack and heap memory if you want to fully understand recursive functions.